This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. All right. I will open the meeting of the East Hampton Planning Board for Tuesday, August 30th, 2022. Uh, all members are appearing in person, but we are recording the meeting. Uh, first item on the agenda is public speak. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to something that is not on the agenda? Well, have public comment for agenda items, but anything not on the agenda. All right, I don't see anyone in the room. Eli, anybody? No, no one raising there. All right, uh, first item is our planning board minutes for July. July 19th, obviously, there's a two busy, but that's just the agenda. I know within the minutes I have are should say June 21st at the top. I think the minutes are likely right. Yeah. I, 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 normally I have them ready. By July 22nd, Friday, July 19th, Tuesday. This is July 19th. All right, so I guess we just need to correct the date of the file, man. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. So I would say 19th. So All right. I motion to approve the planning board minutes for July 19th with the modification of the date to July. Second. Okay. Good. All right. Voting to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? All right. Next item up, uh, we got a couple ANRs. The first one is uh, 133 Parson Street. Is someone here for that? Yes. Okay. Come on down. Hello, everybody. Emily Goldenberg, the surveyor, prepared the plan. I've got a full size copy here. This is for 129 Parson Street. They are swapping some parcels in here, and 129 is conveying this parcel for 133. So that the new line is the solid line. Okay. And that will result in 129 Parsons Street having 15,001 square feet and 133 having 15,646 square feet. Right. No impact on the frontage. Right no impact on the frontage. A couple of quick questions about so sure. this one. This is remaining, just kind of cut off from the road. This section here is good, though, or is it being, did you say it's been joined? It's being conveyed, conveyed yeah, to the so Yeah, added. right now, 129 comes back into here. Okay, got it. And the fence goes along, basically along this line. Yeah, I understand. Okay. So we're making, we're cutting across, holding the fence basically here and giving them some backyard right now mm -hmm. to. 133 is undersized yeah. Yeah. for area. Yeah. So 100 feet on two and 115 on one. Yeah. Sorry. Any other questions from the planning board, planning department? Any comments, questions? Uh, no, no, that's good to me. Any for the public comments, questions? All right. Motion to endorse the ANR for 133 Parsons Street map 146 left. And, and 20, 146, 27. I'll second. All right. Voting to endorse. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all standing. All right. Um, we we'll don't put this way. This. So we got another one coming up down the side. I wonder if I see that map this side. Um, do you need it tonight? Yeah, we'll uh, uh, I don't. I don't need it tonight. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll yeah. sign yeah. at the end and leave it with Eli. Okay. okay. That works tomorrow. Yeah. That's the that that number. Perfect. Six point five. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll be right along to the next ANR, which is 43 Brook Street. Are you as well? That's me as well. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> very efficient with your appearance. So, what we're doing here is we're taking more land from this parcel and conveying this rear parcel. To the meal. Okay, so this is another parcel where right so, now it's like a right, okay, yes. and that just straight lines. Right. Okay. So it's just going to be here for the new line. 
and also no impact on frontage. No impact on frontage. Right. Is the frontage short naturally? No, this was a ANR um, endorsed uh, about a year and a half ago, I think, uh, recorded in Plan Book 249, page 68. It is under 100, though, right? But what, what zone is this in? No, it's. Uh, it's, it's got a little bit. It's, 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 yeah. it's got more than that. Yeah. Yeah. I think you I didn't see that. Yeah. It, yeah, 32, 97. Yeah, it should have the 120. Okay. All right. Any questions from the planning board? Planning department? Sure. Any no, it's a little unusual because it hasn't been assigned a lot number yet. Um, but I spoke with the assessor and it's time to move forward. Okay. Anybody from the public? Alex, questions? All right. Motion to endorse the ANR for 43 Brook Street. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Great. I'll sign those tonight before I leave. Okay. And I'll plan on picking them up tomorrow sometime. All uh, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Moving right along, we've got a public hearing for Tim Shapiro, UVA East Heaven, seeking a special permit. We'll that right. We are the man. <laughs> 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 a couple of nightmares. <laughs> That's what happens when we end up down here. I know. Uh, <laughs> this is like the old days. Yeah. Um, Thank you a lot. Great. Blocking anybody or um, I'm Jeff Flyer uh, from the Berkshire Design Group here on behalf of uh, Ken Fox Shapiro. Looking at property uh, 150 um, North Hampton Street. So the <coughs> existing property, existing property at 150 North Hampton Street is basically at the intersection of Florence Street, there's a small uh, park on the corner. Um, there's an existing building there now. Um, it's a 38,600 roughly square foot lot, uh, highway business district. Um, there's a single story masonry building of about 5,000 square feet um, right now that exists that's, that's roughly in the center of the site. Um, there's a parking lot and paving surrounds the majority of the site. It's roughly 28,000 square feet that's of, of area on the site. Um, leaving roughly three or four thousand square feet per acre is to help roughly the back here that's uh, uh, not, uh, not improvements. There's two existing curb cuts. There's one in this location, there's one right in front of the building that used to serve the garage bays that are in front. Um, there's no storm water on the site right now. There are no site lights um, or any landscaping for that matter, um, except for that blue green space directly behind the building. It's a pre-existing non-conforming site due to the front and rear setbacks. So there's a 16 foot setback that exists now in the rear. There's an 18 foot setback in the front. Um, we did uh, receive DBA approval uh, or endorsement for variance that was required for the special permit that then followed that. So we did receive both of those approvals last week, endorsements last week. Um, the proposal is to renovate the existing building. Um, Renovate the existing building, expand out that little frontage piece in the back, or the front, I'm sorry, and fill in what is allowable in the back, conforming to the existing setback now. Um, add a second story, but largely leave that in an existing location. Um, there are some architectural elevations that we can look at um, later on, um, but essentially create a, a new two story building um, with additions. Um, and the upper roof will be partially open um, because of um, the, the, the function of the building. Uh, we're going to modify, propose to modify the existing parking lot to, to define both drive aisles and parking stalls better than it is now. Um, basically, cutting out areas of, of existing asphalt that aren't needed. Um, with this arrangement, there's uh, nine spaces shown from bogies on the north side. South side has the majority of the parking spaces, the 36. Um, 36 cars that fit to this space. This locate this curb cut location is existing. This one we're proposing to slide down to the north a little bit to align with this parking lot and take that out of the front of the building, dress that up with landscaping, a ground sign in the front, um, and then obviously a, a vegetated buffer and, and you know some landscaping there to, to enhance that, that streetscape. Um, the new building we, has gross square footage of roughly 11,500 square feet. There was an error in the um, in the cover letter, so yeah, apologize for that. Um, by zoning, it requires 38 spaces. We're providing 45, so there is um, there is sufficient parking available on the site for the use. 
Um, we're also proposing that in future, the back of the building will be some sort of landscaped um, um, you know, garden that may include outdoor spas, outdoor you know, hot tubs, but the same premise as the you know, sort of roof deck area um, would be you know, also utilized in the back and then create a, you know, a, nice, a nice garden walk path back there. Um, opportunities for drainage improvements are pretty limited on this site with the exception of just reducing the overall impervious area. There's really nowhere we can tie into or discharge stormwater. Um, we can't tie into the ten. Um, there's more of the drainage infrastructure available to us. So um, besides from providing, you know, as much open space and green space as we can, um, that's, you know, that's the extent of what we're able to do. We are providing, um, uh, installing two new site lights to, you know, light this um, uh, parking lot. Um, there was some supplemental information that was submitted that's a photometrics on it. There, you know, it's a single 14 foot pole um, with with um, two sort of gooseneck heads on it that are uh, dark sky compliant. And um, really, I don't think it much beyond, you know, put candle um, or have a foot candle at the you know, the interior of the lot. So the, the idea is really to keep the levels pretty low. We anticipate there'll be some low level landscape lighting both in the back and maybe for the um, front walkway and the entrance to the building, which is, is off the uh, south side um, in addition. Um, but all of that would be, you know, either ball on lights or more likely low level, you know, landscape lighting. Um, I mentioned the curb cut realignment, and um, one of the things that we are asking for is a waiver from the traffic impact statement. Um, the proposed use is the, the overall numbers are less than what the retail use was on that site, considering, you know, a general retail use. Um, you know, we can certainly provide one if, if needed, but it's, you know, I can't say that it, it is a reduction in overall track on the site. Um, these are just most people in the um, site plan set, if you look details, um, you know, some of the fencing. There isn't much that you know is really out of the ordinary on this site, um, you know, with respect to site elements, plantings, and, and paths. But mostly, what um, you know what's being proposed are building additions and the you know, to the site landscape. Um, building wise, this some of these images were also in that. Um, here. We're also in the um, application, but I just think to provide a good sense of what the, um, you know, what the character of the building and, and spaces are intended to look like. These are all from the previous location um, on uh, in Northampton, um, but these are, you know, several images from mostly the outdoor, um, some of the indoor um, tubs, but this, you know, gives you a sense of what the overall character and intent of the, um, of the project is. Um, the building elevations, um, I apologize, there, the architectural plan catch up a little bit with you know where we are um, in terms of the site plan, but um, looking at sort of the east elevation, so this is um, this is from the street, right? right? Yes, this would be from the street. Um, you know, the, that stone facade would exist um, and remain. Um, there's metal roofing proposed. I'm not sure, Ken and Robin, you may be able to speak to the colors that, you know, that have been thought about or selected a little bit, but you know, up in the, the top where that roof deck is, it's going to be wood fencing that will be visible. So there's no roof for uh, the building to worry about what is down here is that that um, that stone that exists now. Looking at the building from the south where you enter at the main entrance um, uh, on the on this end of the building, this would really serve as a new lobby area, the new sort of um, you know central arrival space with a staircase that would take you to the upper roof. Um, again, you can see the fencing. There's some solar panels proposed. Um, and this will be solar ready. Uh, north elevation. So this is, uh, yeah, looking down. There, there's two existing uh, garage bays that are there now. One will, will remain. Uh, actually, both may remain, but this one will serve as um, sort of the, the deliveries that you know may come um, on that employee parking lot side. Um, and then the west elevation is from the back. This would be where that uh, where that garden is, is shown behind the building. Um, and then, yeah, these are just sort of you know, group floor plans that were developed just to give you an idea of what um, these are again being you know further developed by the architect. That this is the central lobby, the addition space. Um, there's massage rooms on the lower floor, um, laundry facilities, some of the um, you know, employee, employee break rooms, the, the you know, lunch space, the, this kind of functional space needs. Um, and then the second floor, 
is um, you can come up a central stairway. There's also um, there's bathrooms on, on both floors, uh, stairway in the front as well. But this would be the open roof section, and there would be a number of tubs that would you know, have, have private space, fenced in space, similar to the images you see here um, on that upper deck. Um, sample space that's open. Um, I don't know if you, you want to say anything as um, sure as the as the owner and then uh, okay. Add to it, we need a yeah. tour of the facility a little bit more in depth. Um, how it works, right? So right now, uh, facing the street is this view. Um, this is going to end up being the emergency exit. This. Uh, what is the show now will end up being what we call a chill out lobby, which is after your experience, you have a place to sit and just kind of enjoy, <laughs> having been extremely well relaxed. Um, so what used to be the side of the building in the back side of the service area will now become, let's see if I got this right, uh, that's north. Service. Oh, this is, yeah, this is just the staff area, and this is the inside of the spa. We get to the entry. Okay, entry. So the parking lot is out here. You're going to be coming in from Northampton Street parking and going in what would seem now to be the back quarter of that side of the building. That's the entry lobby. Uh, there's a staircase that would take you upstairs. There's a handicapped uh, elevator that would also get you up the stairs. Uh, there's a bathroom, there will be a, a locker slash shoe depository so that basically you'll come in, be greeted, leave your bags, coats, shoes, and then come back, get shown up to a tub room. The tub rooms are open to the sky. Um, we found that our last location, we had more uh, more call for the outdoor hot tubs than the indoor hot tubs. And uh, I mean, you know, when it's five degrees out, we were busy inside. But basically, more often than not, people, even then, people were calling and saying, I want a rooftop Saturday night, eight o'clock. We'd say, I'm sorry. How do you like an indoor tub? And you know, some would take it, some would not. But in this instance, we've decided flat roof, great location. Basically, we're going to put in out eight outdoor hot tub rooms on the roof of the building. Um, when you're outdoors, there's a certain amount of safety to be involved. You know, up on the roof, it feels safe. If you're in the backyard, I think if we have to, um, if we're lucky and, and do the amount of business we hope to, maybe we'll put some indoor tub rooms. Um, this is an indoor tub room that is outdoors. Um, okay, so what it was was we built a 14 by 14 foot uh, gazebo, so to speak, a, a tea house. But that's an eight foot diameter tub, four feet deep. The deck's all around. The roof was elevated off of the walls. And then at the top, there was a skylight that was elevated off of the roof, kind of like a sugar shack, so that the warm air had a place to go. When it was raining, snowing, miserable out, you had a place where you were sort of indoors, but you didn't get overwhelmed by the steam. When you run jets in a hot tub, in an indoor tub, it can get pretty So that was, but here's the tub. The reason that was foggy is that's a rain, rainy day, right? And, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, you know, I don't want to be outside in the rain. It's like, you're going to be wet anyway. <laughs> Go for it. People enjoy it. Uh, here's a, an example of one of our staircases. That's a that's a beautiful wooden staircase. I don't know if we'll uh, be able to use that again, but we'll see. Um, clear redwood, cedar, most of the good mahogany. All of the construction is really high quality. Um, let's see. What else can I point out from the oh indoors massage? Um, let's see. Where, yeah, let's look at that indoor floor. Okay. So if you're coming in from the parking lot, street, here's this front desk, staircase, elevator, 
we're going to get up to the second floor. This, uh, there's our ramp that gets so needed to be going in. These are massage rooms. We had five at the last location. This one allows us a, uh, I think we're going to end up oh, bathrooms. Uh, this is where the dressing, uh, what locker rooms are. This is the chill out lobby. Um, the massage rooms, I anticipate five or six will actually be active as massage rooms and another two could end up being um, acupuncture. There's something called acutonics for those that don't like needles. Uh, it's really quite cool. Um, for tuning forks. And uh, basically they have a, a low range of tuning forks and then a medium high range of tuning forks, just like in the, in the human voice. The woman who uh, is mo both of our practitioners were women, they had like a little wooden block on their, on their waistband and they'd go, and then put it right on a chakra there in the vibrator right here or there. It was remarkable how effective that was. Um, and you didn't get punctured. <laughs> but we also have some friends who are um, acupuncturists. They'll probably do some work with us. Um, there are a few of them, a few folks that are medical lifestyle practitioner uh, coaches and should you have a condition that needs monitoring or, you know, I don't know, you're diabetic or you have kidney stones, they might be able to work with you and teach you, consult with you on how to eat or how, you know, what exercises to do, you know, stay out of sauna. It makes you sweat too much for your kidney stones, things like that. So they can coach. Um, there's another item that has been on my wish list and that's the hyperbaric chamber. It cost a fortune. And um, we had something previous, just sort of as a backstory. We had something at the old tub company that was an isolation tank, which is where you float in uh, salt water and you're in the dark, in the quiet. And it's a, it was a lovely experience, but I only had one. Because I only had one, there are people came to East Heaven for, as a couple, more often than not. I mean, you could come in for sure for a single massage and a, and a float. You've got floats and taps. You know. But if you have two, people could come in as a couple. You, know, you go to your room, I go to my room, and we're done. We'll hang out in the chill out lobby and talk about what we experience. Um, so, hyperbaric chamber for one is, you know, might, might work. I'm hoping to get two so that people can do that, like I said. There's even some that are two people, too, so you could actually sit. And, you know, I, I, you got me aces? <laughs> Go fish. <laughs> okay, so we got that, you know, that's a, that's a wish list. Um, that requires attendant and a supervising uh, physician. And I have both of those ready to go. All we have to do is get them to. Let's see, what else have uh, I think Robin, my wife, was my partner. Um, do we have anything else that's on our list of she was. Yeah, she's there. This is there. <laughs> you can't see her. So my son, her daughter, and I Robin are all uh, the principals and we will be the people that are on um, I think that's the extent of it. In the past, we had as many as 27 massage therapists on our, on our roster, usually somewhere around a dozen, maybe 14 uh, people working the tubs, a few people on maintenance. So we had a pretty good policy of a given payroll would be anywhere from 40 to 45 paychecks. So they're going to become a major employer again. <laughs> Seriously, you guys had some some big manufacturing company here. I don't know how much is left, but I grew up in Fall River. I had a quick question. Sure. Um, the, um, the sign, is that going to be tall or short, the sign at the front? 
Yep, the ground sign. Ground so sign. what is shown right now is they had a over the old building. Okay, yep. Yeah. Right here, and, and we're showing it right now at eight feet tall. Eight feet tall, yeah, okay. to the top. It'll it'll be supported with a couple of posts. And on it's the like side. against the building. Yeah, it would be back against okay, the building because so otherwise it, it, okay. it violated the setback of the sign. Right, so we had to put a parallel. Will it be lit? Yes. Okay. All the time. Not during the day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but all night. Oh, uh, no, we should. Okay. That's my only question. And generally, our hours have passed at the eleven to. Okay. You know, Valentine's Day, TV, you know, might be tempted to stay open later, but in 40 years, we never had any health any health concerns. I mean, we had the concerns. Nobody else did. By the way, I've been in that tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it's in my yard right <laughs> Yeah, much. I've got a view. Yeah, or hair, were you looking at me to ask the question? Or you want to well, I got the answer. The only question I have is uh, what kind of construction are you going to have to have in order to put this on a second floor? Oh, yeah. you're, going to, you're going to have eight tubs up here. You're going to need a lot of support to get that to come and fall down. I mean, so, steel and posting. I mean, that's all it is. The engineer is serious as well. Yeah, it, um, they go on roofs all the time, but steel. That's an awful lot of weight. you got eight tubs. It's a lot, it's 5,000 square feet to spread it over. So okay. it, uh, kind of like in the old days when college kids put uh, water beds in apartments and the land, land, landlords were holding. That's the only thing I was talking about. Libraries are the worst. Libraries are the worst. Libraries are the worst. All right, James. All right, fire away. So um, I'll start with what I think is uh, probably the most difficult for the community, and that's traffic on Northampton Street. You've asked for uh, a waiver from the fire to do a traffic study. So I'd like to get a little sense of you. I can invite your here to, to help us. Sure, I've got In terms of how you view the traffic, but I'd like to fill this in a little bit with a few questions before I get there, so bear with me. Um, I believe you said the rear parking has nine spaces and it's intended for employees. Is that correct? Yes. yes. There are two curb cuts. You're planning on reducing them both 20 feet from what I've read. Yes. Are you going to put any signage in the back that says employees only? How are you going to keep the traffic flow such that only employees are going to park back there? I guess is that we will have something that says employee parking. That seems reasonable. Um, the, the main sign, Nidge, will be for the other enter, you know, right after here at East Heaven Enter. I suspect it'll and the parking lot. So, yeah, yeah, I think we'll probably. Um, yeah, so, you know, this may get planted out of it and it will look less obvious. As a and I'm looking at what is the canopy for a tree on the, on the right side of the entrances there. It, I just want to confirm that's not a bush that in no way is going to block the view of the curb. Cut. No, no, the idea is that, yeah, have something yeah. you can see under and below, but just a. You know, create a little bit of shade and street tree. And you said 36 spots on the other end. Yeah. Um, and I looked at this, I think it was 33 is the number I came as the minimum that's required. Eli, did you look at that at all for the minimum number of parking for this? 38. 38. Yeah. So, I'm, so that with, with the employee parking, right? Which would put them over. Uh, yeah. I don't understand correctly, 36 plus 9, right? 45. So, um, so there seems to be enough. Uh, interest parking. So now I want to get to the point, having covered that, uh, uh, two things. Where's the handicap? Is that that there's one spot there? No, there's, there's two running two, two. Two. Okay, I'm sorry. Two I'm two. Yeah. And uh, do we have any indication, I'm um, looking to you, Eli, and maybe you looked at this too, Jesse, about the minimum requirement for the ADA and that is two and up would be good. I think that's right, but up to 50 spaces. Is two. Yeah. Two. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, tell me about Traffic. yeah. What, what do you think well, the flow is actually going to be? It's really easy. This is this is sort of, we're we're countering. Um, so our business is at night. So you know every time I've been at the. Uh,
We are good again. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah, well, so start that thought from the beginning. <laughs> Most people come in one, a couple will come in one car. I mean, you know, sometimes you need somebody there, but more often than not, people are out on the town. So one car pulls in, but they're there for two hours. You know, I mean, right now our job time is, formerly we did half hour counts, now we're doing 45 minutes or hour and a half. So, how many customers do you think you'll see in an evening? Well, you know, a Tuesday night in July, not a lot. Um, but it's easy to say uh, on the busiest day of the year, 100 people, so 50 cars during the course of a 14 hour day. You know, it gets pretty even. Okay. You know, it gets pretty well. I mean, in, uh, on Valentine's Day, it starts at 11 and it's still one in the morning. You know, we're really busy, but that's a one once in a year. Actually, that whole week is, is a pretty busy week, starting the wind up to Valentine's and then like wind down through presidents. That's one of our challenges. You've indicated you have quite a few employees that are there on staff, but at one point, how many? At any one point. Yeah, how many at any one point? Okay, okay. so usually there's two people at the desk, and there's as many could be on a Valentine's Day, perhaps eight. Maybe nine massage therapists, usually eight. So the nine spaces, you don't think you'll have employee overflow in it? And then, what? and if so, there's like this one period at you know, five o'clock where the day shift is ending and the night shift is beginning. And probably, oh, and at that time, we minimize the number of massage and tubs so that we don't have people in, in service while massage therapists are trying to go home. So we really do sort of wind down the service at around 4.30 to 5.30, and that's when everybody shows up and starts up again. So I think one of my last questions about traffic here, and I apologize, I know I'm hogging everything else questions on traffic, but you indicated in that rear area where the employee parking is that there's currently two sliding bay doors. Uh, maybe, oh, right. maybe um, they might stay, maybe they won't stay. I'm not sure that's no. decided yet. So actually, um, deliveries are where I'm headed with this. I want to know about deliveries. We don't have a lot of them. That's a good start. One door is really what we're going to end up with. There are, there's one door there now, and we're planning to build one that's closer to, with the addition of squ squaring off the front. So there's going to be an eight foot door. Yeah. One garage door there. This one may end up, um, it's an open 10 foot garage door, it may end up being an exit for the building to get out to the garden. It's not, it, at this moment, it's not really conceived of that as a building. What gets delivered and how often? Not much, I don't know. I have a pickup truck, I go to Costco a bunch. It's a lot of supplies, um, you know, cups, paper goods, towels. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I go there every, I go to work every day. So whatever I need to bring, but that's going to be this new space that we're talking about will become a supply room so that, you know, that's where the towels are. That's where the extra robes are. That's where the slippers are. That's where the paper goods are. And it's going to be about 20 feet and the employee lunch break room. So we're going to take the Northampton Street traffic lines during the day or at night. If somebody's got a loud muffler or whatever. You don't need to hear that in your massage room. So we're hoping to do all of our quiet work in the back. What kind of vehicles make these? My truck. Your favorite. Yeah, I mean, really, once in a while, um, I may order some hot tub covers, and a, it might come on a, you know, on a tractor trailer. But you know, they're white. You can carry one. I'll carry another one. And we slide them in the door and say goodbye to the driver. And the last question I had about it was about um, access to emergency vehicles in the other area of parking lot there and turnaround space. Uh, yeah. This would be directed to you. I think it, mm -hmm. I think there's enough room for it. Was that considered in that design? 
Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, without without losing a bunch of parking on this end, it was hard to create another aisle. You know, on the back side, it's certainly enough space for an ambulance or you know, a small fire truck to, to pull in. I doubt, you know, a fire truck, if the building is on fire, would you know, pull right into the into the parking lot like that adjacent to the building. But um, there's certainly, you know, more than enough room. It's, you know, the parking spaces and stalls are all, you know, standard dimensions. Um, Actually, you know, East Hampton's got slightly larger parking stall dimensions than, than usual. So, yeah, we're pretty comfortable that there's more than enough room for the emergency vehicles. I have 10 more questions about other stuff, but that covered that. It's got to be someone else's turn. <laughs> there he's got one. <laughs> yeah. Um, how often do you change the water in these places? Great question. All the time. So, what happens is we have two separate purifying systems. One of them is the usual thing that you find on the swimming pool. Only we're only running our whole facility as it was ran 4,000 gallons and with all the pumps and filters that we ran the water turned over in the entire facility through a filter going down to four uh, three or four microns about every 10 minutes the entire facility so a swimming pool is required to turn over three times a day ours was turning over six times an hour okay uh, that's a start um, I used to, when we first started, change the water every two to three days. Whenever it, you know, whenever the filter, there's no, there's no uh, substitution for clean, pure water. And running a dirty water bathhouse is a bad idea. So you must have some kind of a drain in that you're going to have a perpetual. So this is something I never patented, but it's one of the few in the world. I drain all of the tubs drooling all the time. Over the course of 36 hours, all of the water has been exchanged once. All of that water goes through a heat exchanger, so all of the incoming water gets heated by the outgoing water. So I'm basically perpetually taking 104 degree water and perpetually feeding the heater with about 75 degree water instead of 48 street temperature water. So that was how we conserved water made it i mean we were sending cleaner water to the sewer to the septic system than came in from the city we fill you know i i would fill up tubs and look at them and go oh, i can't put those and turn the filters on and get it down to four micron filtration and it was time to so i have a question back is it one filtration system for all of the hot tubs no um, we do a batch process. So in other words, I would use what is, uh, we, we had four filters for four hot tubs. Okay. But they were, they were manifolded so that all four were being fed and all four here were being, were, were sending back. So we had like 400 and you know, about 520 square feet of cartridge filtration for four tubs, which is about, which is excessive, but what I want. Uh, we use uh, computerized uh, sensors that basically take a sec millisecond by millisecond uh, reading of pH, disinfectant, hardness, calcium, you know, so, and temperature. So basically, it, there is reservoirs, the machinery knows like, hey, I need some pH, I need some baking soda, I'm, I'm getting too acidic. Is that loud? Is the, the pump itself loud? It's got to be pumping, right? Well, if you're, no, I mean, if you're in the room sitting next to the top of the pump, yeah. you're going to hear it go, Wah. you know, it sounds, okay. you know, it's, it's hot. not accessible. Like no, I mean, huge people ain't sitting next to it. Okay. <laughs> and they didn't have headphones. Yeah. <laughs> So how, how about the volume of water? I was sort of trying to figure that out. Like, how much water are you using on a regular basis? Um, in a drought. Yeah, 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 you know, <laughs> this is something we need to know. Um, so basically, I anticipate using about with all, you know, laundry, washing, you know, just every showers, all of it, somewhere in the on the order of under 2000 gallons a day. Um, and, you know, this is one of those things that as I move into the future, there is a product that's an enzymatic water treatment. And there's also, we used ozone, but ozone, ultraviolet, enzymes, 
the enzymes eat the oil, the, the body oil. And so for reasons that I used to drain off the water, now I, I suspect it is the if their brag is a fact, then I will be able to really conserve on my water usage. But there's a there's a, a, a pool and spa guys back some. There's no solution for pollution like dilution. There you go. Now you're a member of the club. I have to admit, I'm quite impressed with your knowledge and uh, implementation of new technologies. So you got to do it. You could have like a major water leak one of these days. Would you say one of these cups starts a leak or you what know, happens? I mean, if they yeah. burst the pipe and all of a sudden, no, 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 something crazy like that. Okay. Well, let's see. I never had that. Um, being on the roof, you know, we will be able to dissipate. Um, let's see. It's, it's a good question. Usually, um, my systems are, are in this case will probably have three distinct, discrete systems, so no more than, uh, well, each tub is about 500 gallons, so we might have at a, at a bad day. It could be, too, you know, if, if everything burst and nobody knew it, it could possibly be 1,800 gallons because there's a certain amount that just stays at the bottom. It doesn't happen, so. Um, it's still going water. It's not like oil, right? It's, not oil, but it's yeah. water that's safe. I know people, and I hate to say this because at least nobody from the health department is here or the water department. Yeah. But I've always said, you know, my water passes the, the drinking water standards, and then, you know, I've got to go from there. If, if, if the minimum clean drinking water were in my tub, I really, you know, I'm filtering it. Wait, I'm polishing my water, is what's happening. Yeah. So if we go there, it's potable. Yeah. That's, that is exactly what it is. No, no, like, oh, God. No, no. No, one of the things that it, it brings me here is I know I can brag. Yeah. East Hampton has some of the best water in the country. Maybe the, the best, right? I didn't know if. Is that a good time to give it to trash? So <laughs> Okay. We don't generate a lot in normal in the past, just so you understand how little. I've always been the trash man. Where, yeah. where does your trash get put? <laughs> right in the back of the right in the back. Yeah. 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 You know, we may have a dumpster or some of those like small ones, but generally it's you know a day's worth of trash is it is a black bag. And the, the waste water too, I assume you're that's gonna make your sewage sewer. treatment plant happy. I'm gonna be diluting your pollution. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's the solution. Um <laughs> you want all right, go. Yeah, what are you what are you gonna do about a storing wall in this thing? Oh wow. And we're going to follow up too, though. I got to. Oh, um, Fred, the man who's run the car lot for years, just showed me everywhere to you know, pile my stuff. But I have a three quarter ton pickup truck I've been following for years. Any idea that you could point out on the map where those locations might be? Um, I think these grassy, right? You got grassy knolls. Grassy knolls, yeah. It's all wood giants. And this is, yeah, kind of thing out there. Now, when you. I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn, but Fred basically told me there's a, there's a, a large trench. I'm not, it's all lined with stone, but he just said that's where the, and, and this parking lot sort of pitches in that direction. So it's not dumping it. What I asked him, is this dumping out onto Northampton Street? He said, no, kind of back. Um, a few questions about some of the things you mentioned that you we're sort of like wish list or we weren't quite sure. So are you looking for permission from us to do backyard tubs in that Japanese garden? Or do you not need that included and you'll come back if you decide to do it and modify it? Yeah. Okay. That will be fine. Um, right now we're thinking of a garden. We yeah. might do saunas back there. I don't know if that record, you know, they're just going to be up against the building. But. Well, I like for us and for anyone listening to know sort of what you're asking for today versus what you might come back for and just either modify it for an amendment or a minor modification or something like that. So I just want to make sure we know. Okay. So I mean, is sauna something that you think is realistically in the near term, that back garden? Yeah, we think maybe not hot tubs, yeah. And possibly. Possibly. We, we did do something that was really different for us. We had always done uh, tubs that were six foot diameter, four foot deep, as, as the picture. Uh, we started with one. It's called a furrow, and it's basically a single-person bathtub. So if you decided to come for a massage and come for a tub, 
we had a place to put it that was safe, the right depth, all that good stuff. Okay, so you would be looking might for do that. Okay, so you would be looking for permission tonight for Solomon's intelligence potentially in that backyard garden. Okay. Um, and then the other one that sort of has been a little bit flexible is the hours. So, you know, we typically will issue a decision with hours of operation and you sort of have like a little bit of gray area around the edges here. So what are you actually looking for? Like what's your, you know, obviously if you're allowed to be open sure. 10 to 11, we can obviously be open from one to six if you want to. Okay. Why don't we say 10? We don't do much more. Yeah. And it's just not, it's not real, but we get there to 10. So let's, you know, the people from East Hampton morning early when we arrive on. We could do that, I'm sure. Um, and then what about the closing time? Because that's going to be the one that's, I mean, there's not many businesses open that late. Yeah. Right here. So here's, here's the reality. Midnight is pretty much our desired closing time. Almost all, almost all, all the days. However, the reason it's my desire, not necessarily the client's the reason is that, as my son would say, you know, basically nothing much happens after midnight and we really don't need that business. Yeah. And that's fine. If you could just, but here's an analogy. If you go out to dinner and a restaurant closes at nine o'clock, do you really want to get in there at 25 off or 20 or nothing? Answer is no, I don't. You know, we just now want to be you know, doing our closing and getting out, the chef's trying to get the kitchen clean, you know, and there I am at 10 and nine ordering my steak and monster and whatever. So a restaurant should, in my estimation, say we're open until 10. Nobody's coming, but at least, you know, you won't feel bad about showing up at nine or, or, or quarter nine. Same thing's true with a hot dog. So if I say I close at 11, my staff's going to start, you know, putting the covers on, <laughs> turning a few rooms, lights out. You know, it's like we're open till midnight. Don't start shutting down till 11. That's my take. But on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday night, we'll have a few parties there till midnight. It's Friday. It's Saturday. Okay. So midnight. Midnight's the... The, the good shutdown time. Now, if if you wanted, we could, you know, ask for special permission for Valentine's, you know, for, for February, just so we could, you know, we're so over demanded on, on in, in that one week. And that would be to go later then. Yeah. So, and, and no one, I just don't have to stay after one. No. What's the nearest residence to you? I'm sorry. No. Uh, let me just ask this one question. So we're voting on this piece tonight, right here. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yeah, so that's part of the application. Okay, with these hot tubs. Oh, I think those, those are just sort of schematic. Yeah, yeah just we're that. actually we'll, thinking of oh, that. just that right there. Okay, we're thinking of, of you know if we were to do some oh, yeah. solo tubs. Right now, there's a trailer, a tractor trailer, trailer, right in yeah. the building right there, and that's probably where we would be able to. Come out of the building with you know an outdoor shower and, and a tub. So there would be need to be a fence food. here if there was were hot tubs, right? right? Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. We, we, we showed individual fences around just the tubs, but okay. the garden. Yes. Okay. 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 Not really understanding, but you know, where exactly is there fencing? I know there's some fencing that's on the roof, but yeah. is there any in the backyard? Well, right now there's some along this side, and then there's the class. And you would plan on keeping that, but not upgrading it or doing anything. This, but, you know, personally, if it's possible, I'll probably try to dispense it just to keep it secure and beautiful. And beautiful. I mean, he's got a picture. We, we, we have a fence yeah. design. It's a. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's good. Don't fall away. That was yeah. Dumpster enclosure, and that's a cedar fence. Yeah. Okay. And the, Jeff, the curb cut needs DOT approval, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we're going through for this one. We're going through that okay. process. Yeah. All right. So is it just the garden area that's fenced, not the whole property? I don't. Right. You know. I mean. I, I think we're going to just leave this. It's pretty impassable as is. All right. But fencing, uh, like between the two parking lots on the right. 
between, yeah, yeah. right there, and, then, right. and possibly around other places. I think that there is some version of regulations that require you to not block the street. You can't go too far, right? Like you street. can't go too close to the street, right? right. But otherwise, I'd say. Yeah, but the garden is open to the rest of the property. No, I think the garden would be fenced, right? Well, I think it will all be contained so that people don't get back there by accident somehow. Yeah, you know, there are there are a lot of people that come through the lot from from here. You know, they, they cut through. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll figure out a way to plant or something back there that maybe has less. We're looking for those a uh, uh, hat of certainty. Yeah. About <laughs> yeah. At least Do you want like to put a fence up? Yes. I mean, I'm hearing it, yes. <laughs> sure. I feel like you I do, you, you do, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I think that's in the garden right yeah. makes sense. I would agree. So, and then I'd like to, I don't want to stop there, that's important, but I just also want to feel like we didn't, in my mind, quite finish with the hours. Um, what I heard is that, you know, midnight, but sometimes longer. And so I'm kind of looking for, you know, what we need to do is make sure that our language is going to meet your needs so that you don't run afoul of angry neighbors and it causes problems. We know we want everyone to know what, what the rules are. Before okay. that, we need to know what Okay. Could we, could we request um, her till 1? I mean, is that so you'd like 10 a.m. Like to 1, 1 a.m.? And, and is there an easy have to file up on... That's a good question. Um, and one, thing you could do, one thing you can do. Right. That's why we used to close at one. One, one yeah. thing you can do, and I recommend it, is, and, and just you help me with this extreme knowledge, is say that you would like the hours allowable, the max hours allowable according to the zone. Yeah, but fair enough. Okay. That seems that's like a fair work. That's, 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 yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Thank that. you. And it comes up a lot too place. because then if those rules change, you have to come back yeah. and modify it. Right? So just so you know, I mean, you know, my goal is to not, I'm not saying this because you're the planning board. I'm saying because I don't want trouble. Yeah. I, you know, we never stayed open till two so that we could clear out Packards and all the right. other bars. Oh, great. All the drunks are going to come on. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, my question before was just real quick where is the closest residence to you? I'm trying to see, like, who, in the worst case scenario, who would this trigger? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a house. Yeah, there's a house right there. there. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. This might be a house. Uh, so see, that's sunset no, motors. Okay, so there's a few within a hundred yards. Well, no, but not a big Yeah, across yeah. the street, yeah. street yeah. behind, yeah. right? It's, that's always that tough oh, room where there's the, you know, highway business and then row behind it, there's a road. Yeah. So, so one of the things that we don't do and what we've never done is we don't have yeah. music yeah. going through speakers outside. Yeah. One of the things we did try and worked kind of nice. It's really, here's a, here's a real interesting uh, piece of the future. They make music, they make speakers that play through the water into your body. So it, it's uh, a transducer and you attach it to the exterior. It's like what the, the women, the Esther Williams people, when they're you know, swimming in a pool, they can hear the purpose of the water. You guys saw mushrooms there too? That's the line. So the gist of it is that music plays through your bones. And and you can be in the room next door and not hear it. And so that's the extent of what we anticipated doing for if the, if we should add music. Well and historically in Northampton, your neighborhood had you had people living in a house yeah. right next right. door. Literally. And, it's for close for, to so forty years. And 40 years in business, you never got any complaints. Not a single yeah. client started generating a lot of Well, and you're no. talking about, no. it's, it's, you've got dark sky compliant lighting, and you shouldn't have any sound coming out of the building. So your, your late night disruption is going to be cars, even the parking lot. Yeah. And that's going to be pretty minimal. 
by the time the late night comes around, it's it's you know our business tails off just like all other businesses. My husband lived in that house next to East Heaven oh, yeah. in Northampton, and he had no issues. Really? Thank you. Wow. Thank you. I love that. <laughs> all right, we'll let Danny talk soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sitting down here. <laughs> uh, I'm just curious for the engineer. Yeah. Uh, do you guys look into any of the IT trip? Generation model. Well, that's what I said. We, I mean, we did we did look at those numbers for retail use compared to I don't know. I mean, that's what it is now. It's a general retail use. Yeah. Well, compared actually, right now, one. I don't think it's anybody's actually <laughs> occupying. So I well, we've got to compare it to what it used to be. Yeah. So we're doing that comparison to so like, retail use. I'm just saying the traffic yeah. experience by somebody today is indicate indicative of an empty business and not swapping out a you know like for like you know just curious because even your imagery shows a queue that goes right up to the entrance mm -hmm. i don't know if you noticed but yeah so is that's... there any any need for any additional signal timing or anything like that at the intersection no i mean not for the for the volumes i mean we i was involved with river valley project i was just yeah. looking at those numbers um and you know the volume of traffic on route 10 compared to even the supermarket it's you know it's it's astounding how little impact it has i don't imagine given it the turnover here that it's going to have any impact on the um you know on the on the uh, service on that on that roadway i was just curious mostly just because the proximity you mm -hmm. know with river valley although there is an intersection fairly close by this is right at yep. the intersection so there are some turning movements this, that could be yep. conflicted but Certainly. i think it was described well enough the nature of the traffic coming in and out. i was just more or less curious how much detail you put into or the thought behind the traffic and how much it was considered yeah so yeah i mean we did we did look at some you know rough numbers and just you know again having to compare it to something you know and it, mostly in redevelopment projects like this with a vacant building you know we've got to compare it to you know we can't it's not really fair to compare it to an empty site if it was you know a hospital or an apartment building beforehand because it did generate some building so we did look at the numbers for you know, general retail use and then how this would compare to those ITE numbers and the trip generation was less and understanding that, you know, that business and, you know, the highway business district in general functions, you know, as well as it does, um, that it would, yeah, you know, and then again, with the, with the turnover of the, um, the business, you can see it would have an impact. Okay, and then, so you've got notes here, improved parking lot. Parking lot. And you've got to cut detail for 14 inches of a uh, pavement depth. Um, I so think, are you going to redo the entire, are you going to go down to your sub subgrade and do the gravel like you're showing in the asphalt? I think that zero two? This, this site plan was assembled fairly quickly. Okay. And so that's a standard paving detail. I don't know what the depth of, you know, some bases under there now. I don't, there isn't, you know, there's some, there's some hairline cracks on the surface, you know, so you could just probably use a skin coat. Like a chip seal yeah. or just a seal coat. Yeah. So I would probably revise your plans to not show that like uh, near the full depth pavement uh, well, replacement. So my question, that was a leading question to say if you, your contours are showing a fairly flat lot, which is good and bad, um, especially because you've got the interior of the lot completely curved. So you're retaining all that water and you're introducing all this nice green space on the perimeter that can help infiltrate that water should you remove that interior curb. Yep. Additionally, that, that western boundary of the curb looks like a nightmare for a plow to have to manage. I think, and I think history shows plows will kind of rip apart interior curbing on parking lots anyway yep. over time. So I suggest maybe revisit that interior curb and do, if you do a skim coat, we all know you don't need a lot of elevation to coerce water to go certain ways, especially if you're starting out with a, with as your contour show, a pancake flat lot. So if you raise one end, half an, uh, you know, an inch, half an inch, and get it to actually physically dip towards the back or go into your nicely new created plantings um, to help keep them growing and, and keep the water manageable. Um, I would suggest maybe that would maybe something you want to look at. Um, another question for you too. So you're before you before you shift, I'll just say that we did stand out in the parking lot with the with uh, one of the current owners and he said that he already does have it 
Yeah, you can just change to it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm just going based on the plan you submitted and the contours that are shown on the plan. There's 188 foot contour that kind of shows it. I think we just wow. we just didn't know that until we sat down there and talked with him. So I'm just saying he didn't yeah, say that to us. I believe you. Yeah. I just have to go based on what I have in front of me. Um, sure. So just take it for what it's worth. Um, and I know you're adding on to the building. What what are you doing with your roof runoff? How are you maintaining? Where are your gutters? Are you doing any rain rain barrels? Are you how are you managing any of the roof runoff? Is that just ties into the storm? You just sending it right down to the sanitary. I mean, it's the same roof. It's smaller. <clears throat> I suspect those are exterior gutters that would just discharge and clean. Just to you know, I don't think anything goes through sure. pipe system there now. Just curious. Aware of this. Yeah. You know, something yeah. to be considered. Um, so you didn't yeah. consider no dry wells or cold tech units or trench drains or anything like that? Okay. okay. Um, I, what do you why doing? is that? I guess yeah. my question is why is that? Because, I mean, <clears throat> for other applicants, they're when we look at stormwater, we want them to maintain the stormwater on site. With some cold tech units underneath mm -hmm. the parking lot or dry wells or dry wells. infiltratable soil right so I, I, I this is the first time i've ever been in front of an applicant that said well we don't really know what to do with the storm we there's nowhere to put stormwater so we don't have a stormwater system and that's surprising to me when you said that mm -hmm. because that we there's always something to do with stormwater well the, the issue with this site in particular is that there's nowhere to discharge it so we can put a hole in the ground and it can fill up but once it fills up it's you know we've got now a bathtub underneath the parking lot or some green space because you know there's no there are no catch bases no infrastructure on that site right now that we can utilize again. But again, and, and Mass Highway won't allow a new build drain connection. But we were told that that that, that um, yeah all sure. that there is, we can't is, we can't create a discharge to somebody else's property because okay. yeah your site. Um, so that's the you can still do discharge in your grassy areas like we That's discussed right. earlier removing your yeah. internal curb and allowing some discharge into you know you can create them ever so slightly to create some small swales and then depending on your soil type you're right, if there's bedrock or clay or some really top draining soil a dry well or a pulpit unit will not work but if you've got sandy uh, we don't know what the soil type is under that part and, like, and how uh, do you have soil samples from it or? i we know this area fairly well from adjacent sites and other work and just yeah yeah you know, I, island street they always okay so then, then yeah, that's yeah. a fair question so in that, that yeah. deep infiltration it seems like it's not Cool. But it sounds like those interior curbs are definitely going to make things worse rather than I don't see right? the I don't I, see the benefit of that. Yeah, I completely agree that okay. the attempt wasn't to curb the entire parking lot. That okay. you know, we're going to be yeah, rely on one. Sorry, yes, we're going to rely on the natural sheet flow to, to those green okay. spaces that we're creating around the edges to okay to mitigate that um, possible. And then, what, are you guys on natural gas? I mean, it seems yes. like it's like a big heat transfer project, right? So it's like heating water. Water is getting cooled by the atmosphere. It's like a lot of energy. What it's, I hope to do, yep, is so we're going to start with uh, mini splits for the air conditioning and the heating. Yep. We're going to do radiant heating in the floor, uh, solar on the roof. We have a remote solar system that's going to also provide electricity. We're hoping to do uh, heat pump, water heating. The ones that do uh, air to air, uh, air to water. Uh, so that's going to be electric. Uh, we're trying to not use. Basically, we're hoping to get to carbon neutral. Um, but you do have a connection for natural gas there, only because there's a moratorium. So that's right, yes. we bring it up to make sure some geothermal some is the, it, it and is it's like design you can't edit if you don't that. And so. Part of what may happen is we may bury geothermal or drill wells into the parking lot before we do the uh, stick. Okay. So yeah, I think Cushing is the well driller. There's somebody from, I think it's Minnesota, who's the world's lead, or the country's leading uh, geothermal consultant. And I think, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to have to take a lot of. Um, Local, I mean, I want everybody to be a local contractor, but I'm told that Moran is the leading geothermal installer in this west part of Western Mass. And so hopefully I get the design from the person in Minnesota, and well drilling from the guys in New Hampshire, and Moran actually burying the pipes. But hopefully geothermal is going to do much 
of our heat and not gas. And then if, they, if that doesn't work, electric, which is the hot water is being heated electrically through the solar. And, um, but the, and the question was, do we have a gas of up and I said, yes, we do. You we do. do. Absolutely. There are several gas, you know, the kind they have put in your big garages that are hanging up on the ceiling. Those guys have three of those. Um, I, we're going to have a, a gas fireplace, uh, but that's maybe going to be like, I don't know. And chemical or hazardous waste storage on site? Are you using any like chlorinated products, anything that's like RECRA, uh, gear two, any of those kind of permits? I mean, it's EPA basically the same stuff you put in a swimming pool. Yeah. Like bromine, not chlorine. So it's not, it's not classified as hazardous. I wouldn't need it. Well, I mean, there's classifications and there's certain requirements to store these kind of chemicals. No, no, and, no. It was all just. And then the same thing with your disposal. I was just curious if you needed to keep any of this material in a tight tank or any kind of disposal no, requirements if you're flushing everything out. Do you do any testing of the water just to make sure? Yeah, all the water is tested millisecond yeah. by millisecond. So we're, we're running a, um, a 7.5 pH, which we change with baking soda. So it's water that comes in at like 6.8. We add baking soda and maintain it at 7.5, which yeah. is basically yeah. like you should be able to open your, open your eyes under the water in the tub and not burn, not come up like that. Yeah. Um, bromine is uh, CDC recommended. It's a little bit higher than drinking water, but still drinkable. And so we're running um, We're running for, we, we shoot for four parts per million of chlorine, which is really still potable. Uh, six over six would be like making your skin a little bit itchy. And two, which would still be safe, would be a little bit less than what you want for a swimming pool. It would still be cool. So, um, and all of that comes in tablet form. Uh, we have a feeder, so we fill the feeder with tablets and then when the, the machinery says, hey, I want some more bromine, it opens a valve that allows water to flow through the tank and erosion feed the tablets. But no, there's never a time where we dump anything. There's never a bulk dumping, dumping of chemicals. There is no liquid chlorine. It's too strong. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions from player or demos? James? I have one last one. Uh, I, I like in overall, personally found acceptable the uh, outside lighting on the 14 foot poles, which you downward facing uh, uh, during the spectrum client. Uh, but there was some mention, I think, uh, of some lights in the building itself. And I wonder if you could just tell me, are those also going to be downward facing? Uh, can you tell me anything about them? Where are they going to go? Uh, See if I've got any photo. Oh. Better for my glasses. Awesome. Barely see it. Um, this is a light fixture. And what it is, is down in, in this cavity are the. Uh, Those are internal on the rotom. Yeah. I'm speaking on the outside, right? I just want to make sure you know what I mean. All right. Well, okay. this, this is how I light my outdoor tubs. Right. Okay. And there's nothing on the outside. So the exterior of the building has no lighting. Um, up until now, it never has. Now, uh, some of the light that was in these hidden bulb would shine down because there's a roof and, a, and an overhang. Okay. So it was kind of like a lit up gutter. Now let's see what, what about the street facing facade? That, that's yeah, what's really getting at. The street facing yeah. mm -hmm. facade. Of, and, and I think Jeff, you mentioned clear out the sidewalks along the side. Too. I imagine there, there will like to be some emergency lighting, obviously, at those egress doors. doors on the front. Yeah. 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 They're just that's egress. Fire. Um, I don't know, you know, I could anticipate maybe a small wall pack or something that would be, you know, a dim light and chantrance just to, you know, put it out there. There is some, there are some glass doors, there's going to be some ambient light from inside, but there's going to be a need for, it's going to be fairly obvious. And no pole on the employee side? No. Okay. No, I think there's a lot of ambient light, there's a lot of ambient light. Yeah. 
And yeah, so the only other light that I mentioned was some low level landscape light, you know, just the mm -hmm. stuff that's stuck on the, you know, the planting beds, the like the pathways and all that. So we are going. Um, I'm going to ask a question. <laughs> oh. If if we're not lighting up the parking lot and we're not lighting up the employee parking lot, I mean, I've got, you know, young women there. It's time to go home. I want to go, I want them to be safe. Yeah, we do too. I mean, <laughs> so a dark, a dark, um, a dark parking lot isn't good either. What we want to do, <laughs> what we want to do is limit where that light goes, right? So the, the beauty of sort of what we almost all do now is the dark spot and quiet lights is that that light should never leave the parking lot, right? So, but the parking lot, yeah, I just will put them in. No, we're we're not in a universe where we want no lights on the outside. That's not feasible. We're trying to balance the security uh, of the individual citizen as well as that keepers right in the neighboring woods. My suggestion would be a couple low level wall packs on that light or on that elevation on the north elevation just to light that, you know, like that path for yeah. the employee spaces. I think there'll be plenty of light out here. Um I do want to show you the point. But that combined with you know the other ambient light. Here's another view. I told you that these were all hidden, but here's another view of it. There were receptor lighting uh, fixtures mounted on the top side of this board so that what we did was we, we lit up the, the underside of the underside of the roof yeah. was the light fixture. But there was a board here where the lights light bulbs were mounted. So yeah. not much was coming down or, or you know illuminating the outside. But a little bit ideal. a little bit could come out this way, but here's the wooden gutter. That's a kid should see the which is what my staff said when they didn't change it. All right, all right. And I want to clarify just because I think I can tell from your laughter that uh, something I had anticipated happened on people the frog. <laughs> just so we're clear. Oh my god, here. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. I'm hoping you guys got to clarify. In 40 years, we've had, you know, we had somebody that used to climb up a tree and call the police on one. Wow. There's always somebody. You know, there's one guy sooner or later and he climbed up on an adjacent roof. No, no, it really isn't that that I'm thinking. I'm thinking about wildlife. Yeah. It's just safe for all this wildlife. Yeah. yeah, you know. It's a not good best guy. Yeah, it was. Jesse didn't used yeah. to say it all the time. Anyway. Um, all right. Anyone else on the board with questions? Yeah. Planning department, any comments, questions? Uh, I just want to start with the lighting on the sign. Um, I don't know if you have any more specifics about the type of lighting on there or not. Um, we might just want to add a key to him. Um, I mean, we already have our standard condition that the sign has to be approved by the building inspector, yeah, right? So it's got to meet the building code. It doesn't really matter what we approve. It's, yeah. It falls under the sign ordinance, right? So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I just want to be clear. There's, um, though I do have just, uh, you know, I'm running it by you because you, maybe you'll tell me I've got to get started on a different sign. I have a sign that, that used to be three feet in diameter, and we had a different sign that said East Heaven Hot Cups. And I ended up changing it to just a six foot round on the building with, uh, with light. Yeah, check check the sign ordinance and the building inspector. There's a million variables in there. Yeah, we can talk about it after, but um, there just might be some restrictions on the they have to end up in intensity. The and, yeah. um, all right, any comments or questions from people in the room? Do it this way. Yes, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, my name is uh, Bill Cannon. Uh, I own a building at 158 Northampton Street, which is two two doors down. I'm, I'm right in between the Fit and Nikki D. Yeah. The small gray uh, building. Um, I, if I if I could just kind of say a few things, please. Then, yeah. uh, they could be we can answer them individually. Um, first of all, uh, there, there was a lot of discussion about the drainage and everything else. I just want the planning board and the prospective owner to know that uh, along the back of the property and that goes along the back of my property is a channel. There is a drainage channel there. And uh, there is language in my deed that requires me to not only keep the ditch open, but maintain it as well and and this this language has been handed down uh i have 
three or four different ownerships of my my parcel and, and involved in it, and it's all been handed down. And Nikki D, who owns the the fifth and Senate, has that same encumbrance. Um, but the strange thing about it, and I had a surveyor come out and look at it, the channel isn't even on my property. It's um, it's beyond my property, so I don't even have any. I don't even have any rights to, to kind of maintain everything else. But I just thought I'd let the owner know that uh, for some strange reason, there's been this encumbrance, perpetuity, it's in perpetuity uh, to allow the back of that parking lot to drain into the drainage wheel, come along the back of my property. And then it does a strange thing where it kind of dives down uh, underneath Nikki D's parking lot and just some drainage and everything on it's, it's a strange it's a strange thing i, I don't want to get into all the you know, the particulars about it and everything else but i i just thought jeff just to, to let you know that sure. you know it's there, that there yeah. it's there man yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't know and i i can appreciate your uh your frustration and the, the you know your your drainage resolutions are kind of limited and everything else but i, I I would think that you know whatever happens there, you guys would take care of it. Everything else. Yep. Freddie pointed it out to us. There's a bridge from coming over from uh, over it from Sunset Motors. Yeah. Where people right. walk. Yeah. And uh, yeah. there's a drain over in Catherine Root Wayside. Park. Yes. Right. So in some way it's yeah. Well, just so that you know, yeah, it comes down the back and you know there. So. So it drains uh, into a uh, storm drain in the park. You're saying I think or so we don't it, it, it actually I, I believe it, it kind of drains all the terrain it kind of slopes from North Hampton Street towards the back right but it drains in towards the park towards what is that uh, actually it drains I think the other coming down downhill the other yeah, direction yeah, towards yes towards the north yes and are you purchasing this land or are you renting it? Or purchasing it? So, what did you, does your deed have a similar encumbrance? Do you even wear it? I haven't seen it yet. Well, maybe. Do you I mean, it, it should come out. I mean, yeah, it's an all right. So, that's what it is. There's nothing yeah. we can do about it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Excuse me. All right. All right. Um, so, I, I just a couple little idiosyncrasies here, and I apologize for even bringing them up and everything else. Yeah, so, good touch. Uh, but the uh, the building facade uh, on this on this drawing, the facade that faces Northampton Street mm. is the one I, I would be particularly sensitive about and everything else. And the two story part of it on this on this drawing doesn't show anything except the blank wall. That's right. On um, that color. Yeah. So and I, I noticed on these drawings here, Jeff, mm -hmm. that you're doing something some fenestration there or something. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at the time that submission was made, right. they had caught up to speed with the building elevation. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Just from my way of thinking, you know, we got a lot of traffic. It's the main gateway yeah. into the city and everything else. Yeah, yeah. nothing happen. we've ever done has been on. Yeah. Uh, just to have something yeah. that's a little bit more interested in, like, right. wall is like, good. <laughs> Uh, it's more desirable and everything else. Perfect. And I think this is interesting uh, about when I heard that there was a second story, I wasn't sure of what you were doing with the second story and everything else. But um, am I to assume that from the architectural drawing, you, you've got these little triangular cutouts at the hip. Those are open, open the sky and the over track. to the sky and everything else. Sky. Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, and um, I, I just just for my background and everything else. I like the little fenced in hot tub pods mm. out, out in the backyard. And if you wanted to put some music into it, they can each have their own little individual, you know, uh, theme, whatever. I, I don't know. That, that's just, that's just, um, and I noticed that from the employee parking lot, I'm assuming that they're going to go through the, the delivery entrance or something. There's yeah. No, there's no, no there's, a, there's no door. single door there that's um, shown on the drawings there the on that employee on floor, side. Uh, on the fourth flight one, there's a right. Oh, right. They're not coming through the door. Yeah, it just, it just doesn't show it. 
you know, I'm sure it will be addressed and everything else. Right. Um, I think it's in, it's not in support, it's in the oil, right? Yes, well, they'll either put one in or they'll have to walk around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's yeah, and one. that would be a bit cumbersome because there's, you know, you'd have to kind of sidewalk water on yeah. all yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so no, it should be in there. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Right there. It's going to be there. Yeah, there's the thing. Thank you. Yeah, it's forwarding the employee. Right. Yeah, here's our street. And so, other than that, I am wholeheartedly endorsing this project and speaking in favor of it. And I hope the plan board uh, embraces this as uh, not only. Uh, improvement to a building, shall we say, that's been long vacant and admittedly a little bit of an eyesore out there, no offense to Freddie Pito or anything, uh, but I, I welcome uh, the effort to, to, to come in and, and try to improve the building mm -hmm. and also secondly for the new business mm -hmm. and everything else. So uh, I'm speaking in favor of the project and I'm sure the planning board will do its thing here and, you know, addressing uh, certain things. Uh, you know, traffic, you know, it is what it is there. I know there's a little bit of a tough spot with the traffic light right there. I'd be a little bit worried about the green light and uh, traffic wanting to go towards Northampton and then want to hang a left to get into the thing. And, and I, I see it all the time. I, I walk from there down to Papa George for lunches all the time and everything else. I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a race. You know, once once the, the light turns green, it's something that the plane boy might be mindful about there, right? You know, if somebody wants to come off of that that red light there and then all of a sudden wants to take a left to go into your, into the you know the guest parking lot. I did look into that. Fortunately for the applicant, that is the area where the shoulder actually does establish itself yeah. as wide enough to be passed with a vehicle, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 yeah, it's literally right out right there yeah. driveway. It's also wide yeah. enough shoulders to bypass the It's not a traffic camera. situation, right? Like it's not like a Starbucks where it's constant flow. It's sort See? of no. I, yeah. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. I, I understand that. It's yeah. just yeah. some some of the traffic is on a. It, it, it's going to be unaware yeah. of that potential for it happening. You know, yeah. I, I don't know, people drive in these days, like, well, yep. <laughs> <laughs> don't disagree but with that. I, I don't want the plane board to get the wrong impression. Thank you for coming to East Camp. All right, thank yeah, you, thank Bill. You. Anybody else in the room with comments or questions? Anybody virtually? How many comments? comments? So when I moved into Northampton 40 years ago, <clears throat> There was, there were tumbles blowing down Main Street. It was really rough. And in the 40 years with East Heaven being there, we were a real asset to the community. And people would constantly tell me, after I took a tub at East Heaven, I knew I could live here. Mm -hmm. I hope to do that. Great. Uh, Eli, anybody in the virtual meeting out there that has a comment or question? Nope. If you do, Turn on your video or start talking. It looks like now. All right. Like no. in nothing. Um, I'm going to run through. We have a last minute draft to sit in here. And because it's last minute, I want to make sure we go to the specific findings. So, everybody on the planning board, give a shout out if there's something we need to address. Um, so, first of all, conformance with the provisions of the ordinances of the city of Tampa, general laws of Massachusetts, and local regulations. Thank you. And we'll cover that. Protection of, protection of city amenities and abutting properties to minimize them any detrimental or effective use or destruction of unique or important natural scenic or historic features on the site. I think we're actually there's some nice historic or, uh, natural features being maximized there. Minimization of traffic and safety impacts of the proposed development on adjacent highways. Oh, guys, guys, sorry, with this so I won't get in here. We're recording everything. Um, and maximizes the convenience and safety of vehicular and pedestrian movement within the site. We talked about the traffic stuff and the on site traffic. Um, adequacy of the methods of disposal of sewage and refuse and the drainage of surface and subsurface water covered all of that. Um, adequate means of protecting wetlands, watersheds, aquifers, and well areas. Don't think that applies here. 
um, mitigation of adverse impact on the city's resources, including the effect on the city's water supply and distribution system, sewage collection and treatment systems. That just actually was far less of a burden than I was expecting to hear on the water and like drainage stuff. It's pretty impressive for the business. Mm -hmm. um, provision for off street loading and unloading of vehicles um, and parking, lighting, and internal traffic control. We covered all of that. I think they've got that address. Efforts to integrate the development into the existing landscape, the design of features of vegetative butter, buffers, and retention of open space. I think this goes a long way towards improving that. Um, minimizing the area over which existing vegetation needs to be removed. They're actually adding vegetation. Uh, consistency of the development with respect to setback area placement parking architectural style and landscaping. I think that's fine. Uh, measure to prevent pollution of surface or groundwater to minimize erosion and sedimentation and minimize changes in groundwater levels. I think we've done sounds like as well as we could do with yeah. site restrictions. Um, and advocacy methods to ensure that use will not constitute a nuisance by reason of unacceptable level, unacceptable level of air or water pollution, excessive noise or vision flavored structures and accessories. This is going to create low impact. Yeah. 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 Um, the only conditions in the draft plan, so I think we talked about hours being the maximum hours allowable by city bylaws. Um, so I need a condition for that. What's that? Adding a condition. I think we just yeah, or, or at least have it somewhere in the decision. Um, site improvements have to be constructed and maintained in accordance with the approved site plans that have been submitted. Um, substantial changes have to be reviewed to determine whether it comes back to the planning board or not. Um, I'm not sure what this one number three is. You lie about projects to be greater than ten thousand square feet for less than one acre. Oh, um, yeah, that's for the uh, stormwater. Okay. Um, so essentially, that's, um, sorry, you did my decision. <laughs> uh, um, Someone have a copy. Oh, like, yeah, here. Sorry. Let's see what I wrote here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, so essentially um, seeing that the building inspector will need to sign off that they're um, on their, on on their stormwater. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. That's, that's um, and then uh, we mentioned the one about the sign and just to comply with the sign ordinance for any sign. Um, all landscape areas should be properly maintained. Shrubs or trees which die should be replaced in one growing season. That's another one of our standard ones. All construction shall comply with the state and federal regs, if we're not limited to the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, and obviously, I have to receive approval from the Board of Health prior to beginning operation. I didn't hear anything in there about home. Um, what are you going to say? So I was just going to say, I mean, that might be your question too, is what, what is your construction schedule? Are you going to be? Good question. Um, first, we got to get the architect together, yeah. the structural engineer. We do have an architect that we're working with, and we're going to, we, once we get through this meeting, we'll then be talking with him about different builders. Yeah, so it might be several months before we even start. So it's probably going to be a good year. A good year. Sorry, did I hear anything in there? Yeah, I didn't hear anything in there decision wise about the needed um, uh, waiver for the setback. Um, there were some things that they were requesting, which I think we. I think they needed only from us. I think it was only the waiver of the traffic impacts. They were from us. Very less variances that they got from the ZBA. Okay, yeah. so the. Yeah. So it was. And so the only other thing that changed, I don't think, is condition is just when we describe the application, we'll make sure to note the thing about saunas and hot tubs in that back. No, right. That's that they have potential to yeah. construct that. We were aware of it. Yeah. Can we, do we have to add the potential for geothermal that might go in at some point? That we have to it's really a zoning thing. Okay. I think that's yeah. sort of how they operate their business. And the decision not to require the traffic. I don't know. We'll know that it's a way where I guess you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for the traffic impact statement. Probably part of our vote. Any other conditions that we discussed? No. That need to be in here? Oh. Ready? I'm ready if you are. I motion to approve the special permit for Ken Shapiro TV8 East Heaven with the aforementioned findings. Second. All right, we're going to be in favor of the special permit. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Staying in? All right. Congratulations. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. I was trying when this happened. See you at 12 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will be drunk. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and we are not done. And we're not quite done, folks. So, 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 so.
Um, same thing as the ZBA when we get the decision filed, 20 day till period, and then you file for it. I got your email about We got one yes. sort of going. Yeah. Now we'll get the As part of their plan. Who needs this back? One after the next one. Yeah, we'll put it Sorry, what? The, just the comment about removal of the internal turbine in the back of the lot there. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, that the additions? I, I just, just, you know, just a oh, description okay. in the, when we describe their projects. Okay. Right. 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 All right. Thank you. Last but not least, we've got, uh, and I think we'll. Uh, I think we'll handle these uh, separately. But first of all, we've got the performance guarantee amount for cell power at 51 Brook Street and then strict of insurance for the cell power at 51 Brook Street. Welcome. Oh, yeah. Good evening. Thank you for the education. Thank you for your patience. No, I'm happy to. Um, so, my name is Michael Fenton. I'm a partner at Chad Schwartz and Fenton. Our office is uh, 1441 Main Street in Springfield. I am counsel to Selco Partnerships doing business as Verizon Wireless uh, related to the project at 51 Brook Street. And we're here uh, for satisfaction of two of the conditions on the special permit that was recently granted to increase the tower height to 130 feet. So uh, the first one, I think, uh, Chair Pilcher, to me, did you say you want to deal with the, the performance bond first? I have performance bond first. Sorry. Okay, so we have provided uh, to the board through EY a uh, certification from Hudson Design Group that the estimated removal cost of the tower, which we have no intention of doing, by the way, we're spending a lot of money to build it, uh, would be approximately $28,837.59. So we think that that would be an appropriate number to set for the performance bond. And with your input, we would request that. Uh, Board take the vote to allow that to be the amount of the performance bond which we've currently. Does anybody like city engineer anybody look at this or we're going off this? Uh, no. Okay. They do have a certified PA. Yeah, that's, I mean, I generally, you can both it's not a problem. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, that's sort of my thought on the side uh, as well. I don't know what the same thing. Yes. Yes. Uh, projects. Yeah. yeah. It's reasonable. Anecdotally, the number is jive. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chris, you can Do you want to just move uh, separately or as a group? Sure, let's let's do this separate. Let's let's take a motion to approve the performance guarantee in about 29. So much. Uh, motion. Seconded. All right, all in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. And the second condition that we're here to satisfy tonight is uh, the certificate of liability insurance. And we've provided that certificate. It's a one million uh, per occurrence, one million in aggregate policy. Does that, does that meet the requirements to see? Or what's the, what you yes. we were, we were Well, I think the special permit said that we would be added as an additional insured. I'm not sure. It does not. It doesn't, doesn't the special no, permit right. only says we'll provide not annual that. proof of insurance to the planning board. Correct. And the bylaw is also silent on that subject as to the coverage amounts or town. I would have had the town listed if it was. Yeah. I think this is some of the best of the a motion to approve the or accept the certificate of liability insurance. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. For an hour and a half. Oh, it was a lot. I never, never thought I'd hear about it. Don't drink the water. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right. The most important motion of the night. General law motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well done to you. You are close to the right. Thank you. I didn't even have to hustle. You're right. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.